Welcome to The Approach Shot, the golf show that's more laughs than links, more stories than strokes, more guffaws than golfers. Here are the hosts of The Approach Shot, John Ashton and Neil Michaels. It is us, The Approach Shot. I'm John Ashton. He is Neil Michaels. <laughs> Index thought finger, I'd, please. Index I'd, finger, I'd, please. I thought I'd help with where that was going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Ashton. Did Did you appreciate the um, the 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 class and and the drama with which I intoned the opening? I did. I did. Did you practice that, or was it just something uh, that you did off uh, the top of your hat? It just it, it comes naturally. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wow! No, no wonder all the girls were all over you when you were a DJ. You had that, you had that vocal swagger going. <laughs> there's, there's a, you know, we we talk about being old DJs, and and there's a a a meme I stole from Facebook that we need to put up on on the approach that Facebook page. Okay, it's it's just three old guys, old dust just jockeys walking together, and one guy says. It's Wednesday. No, he says, it's windy. <laughs> yeah, first guy says, it's windy. Second guy says, no, it's Thursday. Third guy <laughs> says, me too. Let's go get a beer. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it ends up in the bar, that's pretty much exactly how our lives would go too. <laughs> yeah. You know, hey, you have you these, when you play these things at 11, after a while, it takes its toll on the inner ear. You know? Yeah, that's very true. As, as apparently does going to a bunch of concerts, which is why, you know, with the wife and I, we, <laughs> we have living in Southern California. There's not a lot of people that, that turn on air conditioning, even if it's 90 degrees, we have a whole house fan instead. And that thing is loud. And so inevitably my wife does two things that she knows, and I do the same thing. So we laugh about it with each other. Number one is we start a conversation as we turn and walk down the hall. So of course <laughs> you can't hear that at all. And then number two, add the whole house fan to it, which sounds like a tank is going through your house. And it's like, Hmm, I wonder why I didn't hear what you just said. So I've just learned to go, okay. <laughs> which if she ever learns that that's what I'm doing means that I probably agreed to way too much stuff. <laughs> hey, I wanted to say, to do a shout out today. Um, okay to our international listeners, because apparently our international listening is growing leaps and bounds, um, not here in the States. And the people in the States are going, shut up and turning it <laughs> off. But apparently in other countries, we're doing quite well. So in Great Britain and Canada, thank you for listening. Uh, we really do appreciate it. We had a huge surge in Portuguese listening this past couple of weeks. What so that? obrigado to you in Portugal. We appreciate mm -hmm. it. And also in India, we have a nice uh, group of listeners there. So we, we very much appreciate all the listening around the globe. The fact that you are listening and sticking with us means that you really must have just as wacky a sense of humor as we do, <laughs> no matter where you are. <laughs> do you have any Russian listeners? We do have we Russian still listeners. still in Moscow? All right. Um, I, 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 you know what? They say we do have Russian listeners. It doesn't pin it down, but I'm guessing that that's probably somebody who's desperate to leave the country and come here and be crazy <laughs> with us. So, oh, well, and New to Zealand them. too. I didn't want to forget New Zealand. Oh, to them, let me just say, Kakavui Pujavai too. They'll know what that means. Because <laughs> <laughs> I sure as hell don't. <laughs> All it's right. Code. It's code for how are you? <laughs> oh, good. Okay. So I told you the other day that I wanted to mention something on the air. Um, this week, because uh, I was up in the mountains this week in Mammoth Lakes, California, which is gorgeous. And uh, I think the elevation where we were was 9,000 feet. Mm. So you really do get the, you know, harder to breathe, especially going up and down steps. And mm -hmm. um, it was much harder to do the regular stuff, but it was gorgeous and you had the mountain air and all that. So it's a nice trade off. So I brought, a, a, you know, a couple of clubs because I knew I was going to go to the driving range. And um, took me a little while to figure out. I have an, a, a new hybrid that I had gotten. So it took me a little while to figure it out. I was hitting it pretty much all over the place, left, right, up, down. Mm -hmm. And uh, opened the club face a little bit. And it's amazing what happens when you do the right thing with the club mm -hmm. because suddenly it was, you know, doing what it was supposed to do. But 
I know you have done this, and I certainly have done this. If you ever want to feel like Superman when you're playing golf, either play in the desert where the ball bounces forever or play in the mountains where there's no air. <clears throat> so I'm hitting this hybrid club, which is smaller than a seven wood. And I'm hitting it 150, 160 in the air. Now, this club is made to go, for me anyway, 125 or 130 on a good day. And I'm watching this thing go, and I thought, I wonder if I took my driver out, what would happen? You know what's amazing? It doesn't matter if you're in the mountains. If you hit the ball on the ground, it's just not going to go very far. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> so I put the driver back where it belonged and I played with my hybrid and I hit a couple of really nice three woods, but I got to tell you, I, I walked off a couple of times like, I'm yeah. such a man. Yes. You know, there's no air to knock it down. Play, Neil. <laughs> I will play nowhere, but in the middle of Denver, Colorado for the rest of my life. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Well, I remember playing a uh, years ago, I remember playing in Phoenix and it was um, January, February, and it had been very dry. And I remember walking up to a hole. It was like, it was a short par four, like a 320, 325. And I thought, I don't need a wood. And so I took out a three iron and that's when I was playing more. So I could hit a three iron. And that sucker mm -hmm. went like 210, 225 in the air and then rolled just off the green. I almost drove a 300 yard hole with a three <laughs> iron. And trust me, I ain't that good. <laughs> oh, the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, we have a guest today that, that could do the same thing. She's a great yes. golfer. Yes, she is. And and she's been uh, on and a little on a crazy side, you know, in a good way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, yeah. she's a friend of she's a friend of yours, <laughs> so she's gotta be a little bit touched. <laughs> This is true. <laughs> uh, she's been TV, uh, QVC, and HSN, and and home shopping, and, and cooking, and all that kind of good stuff. But she's also currently uh, the weekend host for Coast to Coast, the um, the overnight show on the radio that's all about the weird stuff. It's Bigfoot and it's ghosts and it's uh, lots of interesting stuff. And she's on over six hundred radio stations, coast to coast, and Guam and some other areas. So a lot of you probably yeah. know her name. Yeah, it's Connie Willis, and she'll be here with us as soon as we come right back. We are the approach us. shot. Fun stuff. Stick with us. It is time for us the approach shot. I am John Ashton. He is Neil Michaels, and we have a guest who I, I can't believe she actually stopped talking when you said we were going to start rolling. <laughs> You've been talking for three minutes oh and 29 gosh, seconds gosh, before we started. <laughs> and now you said we're going to start in three, two, one. Boom. She stopped. You guys, I don't like this guy. I don't know who this <laughs> guy is. <laughs> Other people in my life are, we're going to start now. Honey, He's stop not talking. a nice three, man. Two, one. He actually is really a woman, just changed into a man recently. <laughs> so he's still got those qualities of not liking the woman that joins the show. <laughs> you, know, you, you asked before about who Neil is, and, and I started with, with my name being K E N K N E E L, um, <laughs> but I didn't think that that would go over well. So. No, it doesn't. No, it, doesn't. <laughs> it has a whole new dimension that we would not want to have to explain. Hey, well, that's when, kind of how I beg for advertising dollars. So you know, <laughs> when I first met John, I I wasn't. It, I mean, were we like? At Lover? Woodhaven, where we were okay. actually there, we were actually mm -hmm. there. I, no, who was with you? It wasn't Neil. No. no. Now, Neil lives in San Diego. Hi. Oh, ooh. Thank yeah. you for the ooh. Yeah. Ooh. And, yeah. How's, How's, that, that, How's that working for you? Uh, I've never met me. <laughs> My I've wife has a job. <laughs> what can I say? You know, you've never met him for real. No, hmm. no never met. Him. I don't know, no, well, met hey, him. you know, way to go, John. Way to go, John. <laughs> no, Neil. You want to tell everybody who Connie is because otherwise people are like, who are these people and why are they letting us in on their inside stuff? <laughs> we don't actually do a show this week. We're just getting three people babbling. That's the new name of the and show. Babble. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I think someone's using that name. We right. actually yeah. had them on the air. Thank you very much. Did you? Yeah. The K N E E L got us the ad dollars on that. <laughs> K E N N L. Connie okay. Willis. What's that story? I can't wait. I'm writing it down. Connie is Willis is profe a professional talker, as you, <laughs> as you may discern. Uh, 
We, I like we that. Met here, she was working here in, in Louisville. Connie, is, you may, may recognize the name. Connie is is one of the weekend <laughs> hosts of they Coast might, to they Coast. Might. Coast to Coast AM. Coast to Coast AM, which is that, the yes. overnight show um, about, you know, UFOs and ghosts and goblins and things that go bump in the night and all that kind of, you know. <laughs> and anything extraordinary outside of that because we've had to yeah. really stretch because we're on seven nights a week and and then some yeah. every day. How many how many stations are you on, Connie? Over six hundred, um, over six hundred affiliates, and then um, we're in uh, Guam and Puerto Rico and Mexico and satellite. Which to me, you can just to me, you can go anywhere, right? Even yeah. Even your old show can be anywhere. You, you can. I just want to know how come they don't put you on Ancient Aliens instead of George Nori. <laughs> That's what I want to know. George is the emperor, man. He's <laughs> he's the dude. <laughs> I'm like George. If they if you can't make it, would you call me? <laughs> no kidding. The History Channel is calling Connie. Why are you not on that for all of their shows? They have so many shows now that man. are. Aliens and and um, yeah, Skywalker Ranch or I, I that I love that show. It's not called Skywalker Ranch. Skinwalker. Skinwalker Ranch. <laughs> what are you? But, it's, but, we got Luke uh, Skywalker over here. What are, you know, show. Darth yeah. Vader's uh, nephew. I mean, they they've got aliens that yeah. they've got experiments and stuff they do that like for all of the people that think alien talk is wacko. Watch that show because these people are scientists and they're getting readings on their instruments that change when they poke the bear a little bit. It's fascinating <laughs> stuff. So I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're in the, the genre and uh, Hey, history channel, this lady right here, she needs a show. Man, yeah. does history channel watch you guys? Um, sure. No, I but love yeah. it. excellent. <laughs> Thanks. This is all I needed. We're trying you, to John? help you here. Connie. <laughs> I appreciate it. Trying to help Thank you. you. Thank you, because you know you can write it off that way. <laughs> love it, love it. It's a recurring theme today. That's <laughs> that's that phrase will that's be what coming he up said. now and again. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Have you ever had a guest or or somebody on the show, Connie, that said something that was just so outrageous? You just said, "Oh, come on, that yes, guy. yes." About three minutes ago, here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. The whole time here. Oh, I have. It was awful. It was terrible because uh so we're just so okay, so I have my own personal shows and then coast to coast. So right. I know you're referring to well, it could probably be any of them, but it was Either on them, coast yeah. to coast because that's that's more of the if it happens on my show, that's cool, you know, it's internet, it's fine, it's mm -hmm. it's my show at that point. I know what the rules are and the game is just like you you. This is right. your show, so you know what the rules are, even right. you know, and and Neil, but this was, you know, George Norrie's show, right? Mm -hmm. On Coast to Coast. So I was still fairly new. I was in Louisville and um I'll never forget it. It was uh it was Valentine's. And I'm coming up on seven years there. So it was the very first Valentine's and I was on that night, Valentine's night. So I bring in this guy, Preston Nichols. And if anybody knows anything about this stuff, he's pretty popular in the world of Montauk project, which is all about, I mean, it's, it's kind of a whole complex thing, but it's basically bringing in uh, younger boys for the most part, blonde, younger, more teen, um, and they would manipulate them. They could influence their minds to get them to do anything they wanted to do. Wow. And yeah, and it's alien involved and all this other stuff involved. And there's a chair that you sit in that's involved. But what they found out was, and I, this guy was somebody you wanted to get Preston Nichols, man. He was the guy that was there through all the, the experiments of it. He was the one down under, he was the one that was being a big part of all this. So to get him was amazing. And, uh, I had him and I, and I knew everything he was going to say. I was ready for that. I knew, I knew every answer he was going to give me except this one. <laughs> it was it was not good but he he uh <laughs> i mean i thought <laughs> ooh, do you want me to go there yes oh sure that's why we asked okay all right yeah <laughs> well <laughs> when i asked him something early on he said something about well we knew how i said something similar to um we knew how exactly how to influence people or maybe i even asked how is it that you influence people what is the secret what's what's that secret and I think he might have said something like, well, we can talk about that later, 
you know, kind of build up to it. And, and whenever mm-hmm. I hear that, when I'm interviewing somebody, I'm like, hey, it just came up. Don't, don't, don't forecast yeah. the interview. <laughs> the interviewer has asked you, <laughs> right? You know, you guys understand that yeah. in this type of thing. So it's like, no, go ahead. We're here. Okay. He goes, okay. <laughs> and he starts going into it. And he had said, well, the way to influence someone is really uh, at the, uh, at, at orgasm. Huh. And, yeah. <laughs> priceless, priceless response there, by the way, guys. Hmm. Huh. I'm just, I'm, and I'm thinking, my, oh, that's my, how, my mind is working now. <laughs> and I'm thinking, that's how women get those diamonds. That's how women get the ring. That's how women get the car. Uh, that's what I'm thinking in my head, right? I'm like, ah, oh, you know. <laughs> and, and then he goes, so we decided to do an experiment on this. And he goes, so me and this one dude knew that that was the way. And we just wanted to experiment and check it out and learn from it. So we were in a room together. Oh, and we looked at each other. <laughs> and this is happening, right? And I'm feeling this buildup going. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Where are we going? Maybe do it I should st- be later. Do but I I'm stop all- it now? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I'm thinking, you guys, I'm truly thinking, I'm thinking, Okay, this is a nighttime show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Okay. So so then he goes, so we looked at each other and we said, well, because they already knew, you know, they were going to experiment on. So they said, they looked at each other and, and he, and, and I said to him, well, I'm not a homo and you're not a homo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and that's where it just went downhill from there. Wow. And it was like, I'm just thinking the whole time he's talking, he is, he's, I'm going, it's a nighttime show. We're all adults here. He's yeah, using all the words like a doctor would use. You know, he was <laughs> using everything. It hit the mark on everything I was ever taught of what to continue on mm-hmm. with. <laughs> and, and I just yeah. thought, okay, you can't be like, you know, you know, just, you know, I just let it go. Cause what else? could I do? And that yeah. was the answer. And so the next day I had a little bit of talking to, and, but I do remember, you know, because it's not my show, it's yeah. someone else's show. If that were, if that were, Hey, the Connie Willis show, I'd been right. Like you'd hear mm, yeah, on right, the other side. Right. right? But I'd, I'd hate to think what the conversation turn would have been. Um, I would have just let him still go and go. All right. Okay. Uh, Cause the homo part was not cool. I was like, no. what do I say no. about that? I'm like, Oh my gosh. But it was, you know, that's, that's what he said. And I would have not. And I remember saying that to the authorities above. I was like, I knew everything he was going to say, but I didn't know that didn't, one. Didn't see that one coming. <laughs> My reaction to I that I was would, have lose been, it. would have been ancient female secret. Yeah. Ancient, <laughs> ancient. <laughs> that is why we generally don't talk about putters and balls and tees and stuff too much here because people have a tendency to go, wait, I heard some of that. What did you say now about? <laughs> what? Oh, you don't, you don't get on the, the show and talk about playing with stiff shafts. <laughs> no, we, 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 <laughs> <is> not allowed. <laughs> Hey, Connie, why, that's, why not? That's, that's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. What have I got right. myself into here? Exactly. Oh. <laughs> You've gotten yourself into a playpen full of silliness. That's yeah, really yeah. All right here. John's like, hey, it's just me. It's just me. Oh, okay. No, I didn't know Rodney Dangerfield was coming over here, man. <laughs> you know what? I just saw him. I only said that because, believe it or not, you guys, I'm, I'm cl- flipping through the channels the other day as I'm doing some work on my site that, you know, just is kind of tedious work and mm-hmm. I could have something else going on. And it was Caddyshack. And I was like, Oh, I got to watch. Cad- <laughs> How long has that been? And Rodney's probably, you know, my favorite of them. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I love what, what's the dude that was in Bill Mary Tyler Moore show. No, oh. not. And I love oh, Bill, yeah. but yeah. Um, what's his name? He, he's yeah. like fantastic. Yeah, Baxter. Yeah. Baxter. His yeah. yeah. Oh, That's his uh, fake name, Knight. right? Ted yeah, Knight. Ted Knight. Ted yeah, Knight, yeah. <laughs> we all know him as Ted Baxter. Yeah. Yeah, Ted hey, Knight. I win the trivia contest again. <laughs> <laughs> more useless information. Neil from- gets more uh, <laughs> another. <laughs> Well, we're waiting. Balls. That's <laughs> it, John. Do that again. Well, we're waiting. Waiting. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also the scene he was in in um, the 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 golf movie with the guy who was the hockey player. Um, the name of which I knew when I started the conversation, and I'm really sorry I brought it up. Yeah. 
but um, they, oh, had a, they had a fist fight oh, oh, oh. <laughs> on the golf course. It was great. And he, and, and Ted yeah, met yeah, one. I know what you're talking about, John. Thanks this a lot. Would a, this would be a good time to put Connie and I on the same level here and you someplace so people can just stare at you while you're getting further and further into dementia. Yeah. And we're over, we'll be over here. Oh, watch out, John. I'm Neil's busy. directing again. <laughs> Connie has her own show, which which is great because if she acted like this, nobody else would hire her. But <laughs> this is fun. I'm already falling in love with Neil because we can do this. This is fun. Oh, okay. Well, that's just that's why we're over here together. John's just going to run the show and we're going to chit chat. But yeah, but yeah, John, do your own thing. See you later. We'll, we'll be over here. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about Connie's show. We're going to talk about some more weird stuff. We're going to talk talk about weird stuff. We're going to talk about how she plays golf. All that. Hey, back. John. Isn't this a golf podcast? <laughs> it is. That's why we're going to talk about playing we need golf. We'll say something about golf. Yeah. <laughs> we will bring it up eventually. That's <laughs> not point. what you told me. <laughs> As the golfers in the audience are going, well, oh, we're waiting. We're waiting. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back, right here on the approach shot. Don't Later. Move. Oh, somebody's oh, name. That's What's the guy's name? That's um, fun. What are you talking about? Thanks for taking it, Neil, because you're throwing it at me, so I got to throw it back. You got it. <laughs> the golf movie um, with, with the, the uh, guy. Um, Wayne Gretzky. Uh, no, just throwing hockey players out. <laughs> Good name. No, what was his name? Mario Come. Lamar. Dude, don't Bobby bring Hall. up anything if you can't wrap it up and finish it up and put it. I know. In, I mean, know, I, hit it, I hit it. Story. Let's go. This, this, this whole thing <laughs> with, uh, you know, I have a very competent. Like Co-host again, like the steel you. sieve, man. That's yeah. Um, that's what? Oh, okay. Help happy, us out. <laughs> happy Gilmore. Oh, oh, that's, that's Adam that Sandler. dude. Yeah, Adam. It's Adam, yeah, Adam Sandler. I yeah. don't. I mean, he's all right, but those I hate movies, him. He's, I hate yeah, him. I'm not a fan. I don't. I don't know. I, He's all, you know, most of them are always the same character, right? But yeah. they are the same character. Yeah, but he has, I, yeah. Somebody, he has to punch somebody out. He has to say some bunch of stupid things. Yeah. Yeah, and he talks, and he talks like like a, a little kid. Yes. Yeah. All right. Here we here we go. Yeah, number three and three. <laughs> That's what it is. Two, one. And we are back. The approach shot. I'm John Ashton, the big guy. He's Neil Michaels. Uh, Hi. Tony Lewis. Uh, is is underneath if you're watching a video on I YouTube. I thought it was going to be audio. Yeah. So, oh, so, it is. oh, it's yeah. on YouTube too. Oh, uh, hey, well, maybe, then, dude, it may be the Kilroy thing, man. But get, get <laughs> happy, too much headroom. Happy too much Gilmore. headroom. Okay. Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. There happy you go. Happy Gilmore. For, the, for those of you who are screaming Thank you. At, oh. the, uh, at the screen or the. I can't get this right. John, dude, that's what she said. Happy Gilmore. It's Adam Abby Gilmore. I mean, have you ever done that? You listen to somebody on the radio and they can't think of something and you know the answer and you're screaming it at them oh, virtually man. every week with you, John. <laughs> oh, man. And by the way, Connie, that may be the first time he's ever said, and Connie is underneath. <laughs> and that's what he said. All right. Boom. The, the, the Blue Rock thing, Connie. The Blue Rock thing. thing. Yeah. thing. It's your oh, thing. He's done so thing. much crap. What you yeah. gonna do? Yeah. Thing. Thanks you for all the studying do. and research of me there, John. <laughs> I'm glad you prepared for the show. Well, I'm not gonna dictate to I you. I didn't even know who doing. Neil was. So you know. <laughs> the show is called, by the way, it's called Blue Rock Talk. It is Ooh. Blue Rock Talk. I know that. Thanks I'm for reading the copy there. Yeah, yeah Blue Rock Talk. This thing and she said, join. I said, okay. Become a blue rocker. I'm a blue yeah. rocker. It's uh, you I'm are a not. Blue rocker. Your name is not on there. I want you to be a blue, a blue rocker. rocker. <laughs> Watching blue rocks go by. Oh my! Oh my! 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 my. <laughs> we'll work on the lyrics there. Okay. We'll move. So, so, I have so something else I should be doing. <laughs> did you want to know what it was about? Did yes. Yeah. What, what do you yes. do? <clears throat> so, <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> so. So this is what I've learned along the way. So John and I have been in radio forever. And uh, you did TV too, right? Didn't you do yeah. some TV? Yeah. What TV did you do? Uh, PM Magazine in Charleston, South Carolina for a while. How cool is that? Hey, sure. yeah, bite me. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to outdo you. So now, Neil, do you, have you done TV and radio or this? I, I actually, this is going to make me like, no. Choke, but I actually auditioned to be the host of PM Magazine in Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh, that's great. Well, see, sure. I was too young at the time to do any part of that. So just letting you know, I watched you. Perfect. <laughs> and I, I did a number, I hosted a number of telethons in the DC area. 
Okay. Okay. Well, wasn't it John when when we were when you were probably doing that? Wasn't it? Was it Angie Humphrey that ended up doing the PM magazine? Well, she did it here in Louisville. Yeah. Yeah, she did. Yeah. Like you know, if she was the she got it all, man. She was the yeah. one who got everything. She did and it great. Was, it was Humphrey, wasn't it? You didn't pronounce the H. It was like a, a Cockney. Oh, accent. it was like an yeah. Okay. Angie Humphrey. Oh, so, I yeah. didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah. Humphrey, hey, you had a little umph going on in there, and your entire body jumped up when you said that. <laughs> Humphrey, everybody would walk in. Hey, it's Angie Humphrey. <laughs> the Oopa Loopas are here today, everybody. Okay, so so the show is. Um, um, I've got a couple shows, and what I've decided to do with with a bunch of the background. That's where I was getting to was to just brand it under Connie Willis because I found out along the way that. I kind of did everything. I kind of was a jack of all trades, right? So I did, I did music radio there at Easy One Hundred Seven Middays mm -hmm. when it was, you know, that 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 time when we called it that. Yeah. And um, and uh, I was at Magic One Hundred Three in Lexington. Then, you know, just doing different music styles with with radio. Never thought I was going to do radio. Finally, ended up getting into TV, and I was doing sports. So I was doing ESPN, and then. And then um, TNN Motorsports and Speed and, and then Disney and different things across the board. And back then, as a broadcaster and a host, it was really all about, did you just do some work? Yeah. It didn't matter that it was cooking or boat, you know, car racing, boat racing, whatever. It's just the fact that you hosted a show. Right. And then they put you in the next one. Nowadays, it is Oh, you did a cooking show? Okay, well, we have a car show over here. We don't need you. Now it's all mm -hmm. about the subject. But back then it wasn't. It was about trust, who would be inside your, you know, who they would allow in their living room because they mm -hmm. trusted them. It didn't matter right. what they did, right? Yep. So that was back then. It was fun. I got to do everything. And then at one point it changed, <laughs> which was a pain. But as in building my own show, it, it's been hard because I'm like, okay, well, there. I want to make sure I hit the people that used to watch me on HSN or the ones that watch me on QVC or the ones that watch me in sports. I want to be able to combine all that. So I ended up, instead of doing, um, you know, just Blue Rock Talk or any of the other shows I've created, because I want to do them all because I have a background in them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like... I'm just going to be like someone once told me, they said, just use your name as the branding. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, yeah. no, no, you're supposed to do this or that. Right. Cause mm -hmm. that's what you're taught at the time. But no, so I have everything under Connie And now, so those shows are blue rock talk. And that one has three shows with it. One of them is far out Thursday, which talks about anything other than, then the next night, which is Bigfoot Friday. So <laughs> Friday is Bigfoot and Thursday. Bigfoot's got his own night. Anything, cool. Bigfoot's got his own night. Bigfoot's a star in the world right now with a lot of activity. But then the feature show is called My Latest Project. It's Creepy Hotspots. So I take you to real active creepy hotspots and we investigate live that's why it was important for me to ask you different questions about uh the formats you're on and what you're using uh because you know john and i can talk about those things we're like what are you using what you know because we both know we have that background right. and it's like what do you think is easy what do you think you know because we've had the same we we can think the same and as a broadcaster coming in to this type of world of the internet Man, it's not like just putting a phone up to your face and doing a YouTube channel. You got to get the right platform. You got to have the right sound. Look, we both have the same freaking microphone. I know. You know, you know, it's broadcast quality, right? We've had engineers. You probably got a great mixer as well. I got the mm. lights, got it all. But from there, so that's my Blue Rock Talk Show. And it's a community. It's a membership. So when you join it, it costs you and not the cost of a podcast. It's not, and I don't have ads running or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Poor John's got to deal with that stuff, man. Oh, that's work. So <laughs> it's work. It's a whole nother gig and that's not the gig I want, you know, but yeah. you still got to market it and everything, but people pay, they come in, there's no haters. It's a safe place for them to talk about these subjects that most people can't. And you can talk yeah. about with other people that have dealt with them or seen them. And then, you know, it's really fun. And we're all excited about the next creepy and hot spot we go to. I was gonna say, not not to cast any aspersions, but I mean, the, the stuff you talk about is weird. It, it's, it's the stuff that's it's out a, there. It's, it's just weird. 
a lot of people real, go, oh crap that there's no such thing as that that's that's it's that's, real are you serious i mean that's what some people reaction oh, would be. I people i'm like join. john what are you what don't be no, doing I know this you, <laughs> you, were, you were in town a couple months ago at waverly sanatorium weren't you well did it sound like that it sounded like you were coming my job yeah. was done. It's done. <laughs> now, we, <laughs> a lot of them I can't make because a lot of the COVID situations have mm -hmm. prevented that. But it's okay because of the way technology is. I'm yeah. here narrating and being the narrator, like watching a parade go by, right? And other right. people are there. So it, it's really, and it's just as effective because I can have other experts come in and, you know, or, you know, well-known researchers of that area come and, in with me and we and kind of watch it unfold. When you get really scared because it is a it lot is of people scary. consider it to be the most haunted place in the country. Waverly Hills, yeah. When it gets really scary, you can turn it off. If you're <laughs> there, you can't. Yeah. And which I, I have been there. And, and these it people, is creepy. it is weird, and you yeah, see stuff, and you just say, Let me let me get out of here, please. Yeah. Now, yeah, where's yeah. the escape hatch? Yeah, and um, so a lot of the creepy. stuff that you talk about is like that. Yeah, so you, have creep, you have creepy hot spots, you have blue rock talk, but then you also have the funny after dark, which yeah, is okay, yeah, hanging, hanging out, yeah. and then you have eat this foodies with attitude, which I'm absolutely going to be joining. <laughs> excellent excellent so so far out thursday bigfoot friday project creepy hotspots all under blue rock talk tv kind of is what i call it now and then yeah i started a show called connie after dark because people want it more i just did two it was supposed to be an hour show it ends up being always two hours it's all live it's all live and and everybody's interactive extremely interactive then the show will be over and they go well we want to keep talking i'm like I'm exhausted. I got to load up the show. I got to do all this stuff. What's wrong with you all? And, yeah. and so yeah. this is I just the it. first half of what yeah. I got to do. Oh, you guys, you have no clue what else <laughs> I'm doing over here. Yeah. So I said, well, you know, I can have another show where you guys buy me a drink. We can, you can buy me a virtual drink and that money goes back into the show. Cause I'm building the platform. This is, you know, I've got to pay for all this. John Ashton is not helping me <laughs> in any way. Like he promised. <laughs> Out on the golf course. You know how that goes. <laughs> when we were both in town, she was the same way. I mean, we played golf a lot together. And I'd ask Loved her it. a question about, you know, something creepy. And she said, well, buy me a drink and we'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I need another drink. Before I'm like, I just bought you golf. What is up with that? Come on. You didn't buy golf. I think the guy traded it out with you. <laughs> and wait a minute. Let me throw my weight around. Let's see if he cares. You didn't pay for it. That's all that counts. <laughs> Hey man, that's what you do. That's hey, that's the only way you survive in the world of radio is people give you free golf, free, free drinks, stuff. free food. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz otherwise you're going they don't pay me enough. It's radio. <laughs> like minimum wage and all the records you can steal. It, if that you're was, happy, exactly. That was my first deal. Hey, but, I want to see about your sound effects library by the way. I want to talk to you about that later. <laughs> but how, how did you get into golf, man? Because I mean, you're you're pretty good, you know, for a girl. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. 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 You know, this is this. It was a it was a radio way that I got into golf. Mm -hmm. It was a radio way. So the radio way was I was in um, Orlando at K92 FM. Boom. Which was Great midday. Thing. Yeah. You know it. Yeah. I had a, a good friend who was the general sales manager. Who? Uh, Lori. She's such a good friend. I'm going to pull a John on you. <laughs> Lori, Lori Guccione. There you go. The Gooch. She wasn't there when I was there. Oh, uh, well. Sorry. Um, she's probably our age. So, yeah. Okay. So it was yeah. long, like, before I, my time, maybe? Before, before you were born, <laughs> probably. I don't know that Lori we're all that far off, but okay. <laughs> Um, oh, bummer. Too bad. Um, yeah. well, and it's very comparable if you're in Louisville um, to um, AMZ. And HAS, Big so yeah, yeah, so K92 FM and WDBO, the talk, they were very much exactly just like that same right. sisterhood, which were the number one stations in town by mm -hmm. far. So it was an honor to be there. But when I was doing middays, our morning guy at the time was a huge golfer. As soon as he got done playing, he'd go play golf or doing the show, he'd go play golf. Mm -hmm. And it was always a lot of golf talk. So at one point, the guy that uh, was the pro at the area, the club he went to all the time, came in at one point 
And I'm trying to think, he just really took a liking to me. I think he, uh, you know, they, I don't think it was just strictly a little PR or anything. I think he, he was a genuine guy who's wonderful, but he at one point said, listen, um, and I think he lived in Lowell at one point or something, but anyway, he said, I'm going to do something for you. And he brought me in a set of clubs mm. and, uh, I've always been athletic, but I never played golf. I never played golf. We grew up at the country club where I met John and I never played. We just swam. We were just going to swim all day <laughs> and never golf. That was boring. You know, we did putt, putt. It was to me, it was like, come on, you know, that, but at the time, that's how I felt. I did. I was playing baseball with the guys. I was playing, you know, whatever, anything else. So he came in with power builts and they were the steel power built clubs, mm -hmm. a set of them. And he goes, these are from Kentucky. So remember, we're in Orlando. So he goes, these are built in Kentucky, in Louisville. And uh, I want to give you these. And I want you to promise me one thing. Before you do anything, you take three lessons with me. Then you can play all you want. I don't care. But you take three lessons with me before you hit one ball. And I was like, cool. I got a pro going to teach me. He's giving me this. This is great. And he's going to set me up with golf. I was like, all right. Okay. I'll give it a shot. Mm -hmm. And man. It was great. He gave me three lessons. I did exactly what he said, but I was, I had had a neck surgery at one point. So I was like, man, I don't know. These are heavy. And he goes, Oh, I'll get you graphite. Right. Was it graphite or titanium? Graphite. Whatever's lighter. Graphite. Okay. So he brought me back that he said, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even think about that. Cause they were ladies clubs. He was like, and he brought me back some graphite and then I could really swing away. Mm -hmm. And that was it. That's how I got into it and just loved it. And especially being in Florida at the time, yeah. I mean, you got great golf courses year round, play all the time, and they're extremely expensive uh, all across the state of Florida. I mean, holy cow. So I got in free all the time. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, great thank you, God. Hey, two weeks ago, we had had a French Henry on. She uses power build clubs too. Okay. So, so is now tell me about that because I need some, I got the same clubs. That was in the nine, mid 90s. Yeah. The technology has probably changed just a tad. I don't new, want one of them drivers with, with like huge, you know, carrying like to. freaking Flintstone clubs you or something. To. You have to have the big head, 460 cc's. Yeah, that's a dude thing, I think. No. Y'all just got to compensate somewhere. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> How big is your club, John? How big is that driver you got? <laughs> Bigger than Neil's. <laughs> Mine are actually plastic. So. That might be why I'm get I'm I'm up to about fifty yards off the tee, so it's, it's, I'm, I'm killing it now. <laughs> I have to replace them a lot. Fifty though. yards <laughs> off the tee. <laughs> Great visual. Yeah. Oh, oh man, that's good yeah. stuff. Where did yeah. you pick up Neil, man? What <laughs> how? What was going on? <laughs> on a, story on a street corner with a plastic golf club in my hand, <laughs> and he's like, "This kid's got potential." <laughs> and a sign that said, we'll work for golf. So. <laughs> Still waiting for that, by the way. Still working, but not. <laughs> no golf. golf, no golf. Yeah, if you call this work, man, we've got to talk. Exactly. Uh, oh, <laughs> we've I got a it. bunch of questions. We we have been asking some questions, but we have, we have whittled down a group of questions into the total number of six. We call it a six pack. Uh -oh, and we're going to come man. right back. Oh, I forgot uh, to tell you about this part. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, back. oh Prepare man. Yourself. We are the approach shot. Don't you move. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here it's going to be your best show yet. Well, no? let's hope. Okay. Okay. Well, well, you know, it's not over yet. yet. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, where am I? Boom. Logo me. Boom. There we are. Hey, I need that? some logo. I needed to give you a logo you put our, up there. What I can great. give you a discount coupon. I can give you a coupon code to give to people. They get like 20% off or something. You do it. We're going to, there will be a sh shameless self promotion section coming shortly. Yay. And about five minutes after we get off the air. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Three, two, one. And we are back. The approach shot. I am John Ashton. He is Neil Michaels. Connie Willis yep. has been and will be our guest. And yes. it is time, Mr. Neil. Yes. It is time for the <laughs> six pack brought to you by Arnold Palmer Spiked. Go to www.arnoldpalmerspiked.com to find a retailer near you. And if you haven't been drinking Arnold Palmer Spiked all summer, what the hell kind of choices are you making? <laughs> Probably not your only bad choice. I exactly. met him once. I met him once. 
<laughs> Arnold Palmer, was he spiked at the time? <laughs> I'm pretty, I think that's who I met, by the way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> who, wait a minute, who designed Valhalla in Kentucky? Jack Nicholas. Oh, that's who I met. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Arnold. I'm sure wasn't happy about it. Spiked. <laughs> not, not happy I Madison. mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Connie, here's a six pack of questions. I know this is going to be hard for you, <laughs> but you answer the first thing that comes to mind and keep it brief. <clears throat> oh, okay. Ooh, okay. okay. <laughs> Question one You have a show called Win Any Lottery. If you won the lottery, what would you do with the money? Oh, man. I would have a really cool research center up in the Rockies where. Uh, we would learn about these things that are supposed to not exist in a deeper fashion. Because cool. they do so, exist. So not a car? Okay. <laughs> oh, well, that's all secondary. And, you know, <laughs> come on. <laughs> no, that's probably the best answer you could have given. Thank you. Thank Question you. Question two. Who is more passionate, Bigfoot fans <laughs> or ghost and alien seekers? Oop. Prince Oop. Sets. Oop. We might go. want to put our guest on now, John. Oh, thank you, John. Hey, hey. hey. <laughs> I'm just waiting oh, yeah. here. The radio, <laughs> guy, the radio guy doing TV. Brilliant. Time's up. <laughs> well, so much for the bro. Um, that's three things, actually. There is a Bigfoot crowd. There's a UFO crowd or, or alien crowd. Those are separate, by the way, which is All amazing. Right. But right. they are. UFO people are not always alien people. And then you have ghost people. The ghost people are your biggest audience. They are your biggest amount of people out there. The Bigfoot people are usually people that camp and hike. Um, uh, ghost people are a lot of people that go to, uh, uh, they're, they're into history as well as, you know, going around to local homes and, and, and maybe they live in old homes. Uh, so your biggest group is ghosts. Bigfoot is more people that like to go up the mountains, hunters, campers, hikers. And then the UFO people, usually a little bit more of an intelligent audience is what like people like to say. Um, but you know, they're looking for lights up in the sky. It's a lot smaller group. Uh, but then, you know, I would me myself, it's just lights in the sky, zoom over to the alien world and get really excited about some really creepy stuff in there because to me that'll that kind of uh, pulls them all together to their similarities. And that's what I study is the deeper of all of them and the similarities that they all have. It's fascinating because I know that that I lived in, John and I both at one point lived in Atlanta and we're in Savannah. And I think we've talked about this on the show before that if you go to Savannah or you go to, to Alabama or you go to some of the places where um, they are supposedly quite frequent yeah. and you go and you take the tours and stuff, everybody seems to experience the feeling like your body just got wet or cold or uh, got a chill through you. And I don't care if you're a believer or not, if you walk through there and you experience that a little part of you just switched over It's like, and it's <laughs> real easy because you experience it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best part. That's why with my creepy hotspots, you actually experience it. We so far are batting a thousand with activity each time. And uh, cause it's real. And you if you wow. go to the areas that you know are active, you're gonna have a situation. It's like going to Waverly Hills. People mm -hmm. go there because they know there's going to be some activity. Yeah. And you know, the the other shows which went back to that branding that we were talking about, the Connie After Dark, a drinking virtual show. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna have an undertaker in so you can ask have a drink, relax a little bit, and ask an undertaker anything you've ever wanted to, but we're too <laughs> afraid to ask, right? Uh, but then uh the the cooking show, Eat This, coming up soon. I'm gonna make sure, Neil, that you join. And then the win any lottery of of what a psychic spy. It's a technique that they use with the pendulum to find some of their their um, colleagues and their soldiers that were missing or taken hostage along wow. the way or to find things. So it all still kind of relates along the way, but boom, went across the board uh, with that. And then I don't remember why I was going there, except for maybe a plug. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, <laughs> Selfish I'm sure. plug. I, I think we're pretty sure that that's what it was. <laughs> Actually, and I did have a point, but I'm so sorry. I yeah, lost okay. it. <laughs> you, you led right into question three, which is you Excellent. have another show called Eat This Foodies with Attitude. Yes. So living or dead, who in history would you like to most cook for? Oh, my gosh. Well, the show hasn't come out yet, but it will be soon. And who would I want to cook for? Oh, man. Well, it's going to be kind of a lame answer for you. Maybe. Um, you don't but, know me. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> um, that's funny. Well, it would probably be, you know, um, whoever I'm in love with at the time. That's who <laughs> it's important to me with. So how's that? I, you never expected that one. No, I did not. I fully <laughs> expected Ben Franklin, George <laughs> no, Washington, no. <laughs> somebody from Julius Caesar. They're all dead. <laughs> that's, why I, that's why I put that out there, living or dead. That was the part of the question you may have missed. It's all about love. Yeah, no, it's all about love. It's all about love. And what's all right? Real? Question yeah. four. Speaking of love, since Told you, you, you love like golf that. so much, what one round of golf? or one golf shot that you've hit in your life stands out the most? Oh, my gosh. I love these little close-ups here. Um, I don't <laughs> – you know, what I like to do is I like to get up there and, and uh, I like to take the shots that go in some weird way and um, I can, you know, at least then have a possible Tiger Wood shot. But I think – I think um, – I'm probably bending your question a little bit, but I love when I get up to drive and I, when I nail that ball and it feels just perfect and it's a nice line drive and just keeps going and going and going. And the guys around me that usually are upset because I'm on their, their team when it's a scramble at first, you know, they're like, we got her. And then I do that shot. I love I love when that happens and it goes well, and then they're happy that they've got me. Yes, there you go. That'll work. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That might, that might be a little bit of a bend, but go it's a bend in a good direction. We'll yeah, thanks. <laughs> cool. All Woo, right. Communication. Is, I, have, I have been waiting to ask you this question oh, because no. of everything that you are, every all of your shows combined, <laughs> the ConnieWillis.com brand. Yes. So question five, combining the many areas of your expertise who would you rather spend the day with? Casey Kasem, Leonard Nimoy, Gordon Ramsay, or Arnold Palmer? Oh, Gordon. And I got a picture with him. I know. I oh, saw did it. you see? That's I, why I figured, name you, it there. Because you're yeah. good. I, yeah, yeah, you're good I, with that. I research, yeah. Uh, thank you, What did Gordon. you like about him? What did you like about him? I just, you know, I went to CIA, you probably know that, the Culinary Institute of America in Greystone, which is Napa. You knew that, right? You knew yes, that. I did. did you? I did. Are you? Eh? I researched. Okay. So going there, it really is a militant school. Okay. That is, CIA is like the Harvard of culinary schools. It's like tip top shape and it is real. It is militant. <laughs> yes, chef, no chef. And Gordon Ramsay, as much as uh, he may say the F word or people might be mad because he yells at people. No, it's, that's the way it is at those schools. It's very strict. And, and they don't do that if you're right on target with it. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want slop. They want the best of the best. And uh, in the part of the country he came from, too, they say the F word like it's nothing. It's just the way they talk. Um, but at first I was kind of like, wow, I can't believe it. Just being a TV person and man, he's crossed all the lines. But um, when you when you know what it's all about and he is spot on with exactly what he's telling people to do. He's just trying to make it the best of the best of the best. But once that showtime is over of the cooking, not the TV show, but the showtime of the cooking and the performance of getting all the food out properly, uh, you know, he's just this really cool laid back fun guy. That's just, uh, knows what he's doing. Extremely confident, extremely intelligent, not just with food, but also shows. And I got to meet him when he was doing stuff at QVC and when I was as well, and it was just awesome. He was just the neatest guy and he's a good husband and a good father. And to see all that combined, that's awesome. You know, he has a show now on Nat, uh, National Geographic, Nat Geo, um, where he does a little bit of that cooking slash travel slash adventure. Yeah. And, and it's fantastic. If, if you think Gordon Ramsay is somebody who just berates people, you need to watch this yeah. show because he's exactly the opposite in it. He, he is. Goes, he's very appreciative of everybody who's yeah. local. He'll go off. I've I've watched the ones in Puerto Rico and Italy and and um, north mountains of North Carolina and stuff. And he goes and he takes something from the land or from the water and he creates this dish and he competes against another chef who's local. And he goes to these, he'll go to a farm and he'll have to milk a donkey. Or he'll go <laughs> a fishing donkey, that's his fork. favorite thing. Yeah. You're such a donkey. <laughs> or, he'll pick, or he'll fish for eels in, in Croatia and stuff. 
and he's very respectful and appreciative of everybody. So he's not that guy. That's just what television likes him to be. So. Oh, he's so cool. I, I really love him. I really respect him. He did another show too, where he's in his own kitchen at home and, mm-hmm. and it, it, his kids will just happen to walk in. Cause they, you know, just, it's very realistic as well. And he'll be like, Hey, come in here and help me. No dad. I've seen enough of you today. You know, typical <laughs> kids and, and he'll, you know, play with his son or something who will probably end up doing the same thing he does. But um, also he's funny on TikTok as well. You have to watch so- him on TikTok. So Connie's also a name dropper. She and, and Gordon Ramsay are like that. <laughs> we are. Leonard, I gotta show that picture. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard Nimoy, by the way, not so much. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, he's cool. He's uh, yeah, I got the, you know, kind of you, the Spock, uh, the blue rocker sign good, yeah. from there. So but no, um, you know, he seemed pretty cool. I didn't know much about him. That was kind of the days where you didn't really hear about the actors in their real life um, for the most part, which is good. I don't want to know what they're doing behind closed doors. I just want to see what they're into. But I love that he was into In Search Of. and uh, But you never know from that that group of TV people, how much were they in it? How much was it the show? How much did, you know, did they just do it and then walk out? Me, I'm talking it and I'm walking it. Cause I love it. And well, what's, what's really interesting. I, I mentioned Leonard Nimoy just because of the, the obvious tie into Star Trek, but, but the guy who really is honest to God into everything that you talk about after dark is William Shatner. He, <laughs> he is into UFOs. He is into Do you think stuff. so? Or you think he's just talking it? No, I, I, I've heard interviews and stuff. This is, this is, like a real thing with him. He's you think he goes out in the woods? You think I've he goes? Seen him, I've seen him leading some some discussion groups on uh, the Ancient Aliens program. Yeah, and, and um, he is either well scripted. Yeah, and I've seen him act. And <laughs> yeah, he's not that good an actor. Uh, <laughs> I actually don't think he's as bad as people think in the acting role. I thought he did exactly what he was supposed to do, but. Um, well, you know, I would love to have a conversation with him. So if y'all can set it up, I can totally totally go toe to toe with him on it so John's and then i'll let that. you know how much he knows John's on, John's on top of that go ahead and call bill and, and say yeah, hey. call bill, yeah, bill. <laughs> question six because that was a Come very on, brief answer good lord that one was 45 minutes on the one question alone <laughs> uh, question oh, six oh i had an answer i had some other thing with shatner i can tell you real quick sure, can i do it, it? Look, is that okay? Yeah. Can I just yeah. get the show for a minute? It was interesting because somebody I know was following him on Facebook, and I guess he did something on the show that he has uh, coming out. And uh, I just remember going in, and I saw it, and I remember thinking, ah. so I wrote in there, and I said something like, hey, I can take you to Bigfoot, <laughs> you know? And so uh, I got Facebook put me in some sort of little jail because, hey, <laughs> you're writing about a mythic character and i just thought well that's how much of a loser facebook is and look i don't cut on platforms like that but hey these are real and that really upset me because these are real Mm -hmm. and first of all shatner should be talking about that kind of stuff on that show that he's talking about they're they're extraterrestrial there's something we don't know what they are but whatever they are i'm writing it and then facebook's telling me and and getting me in trouble because i'm talking about something mythical well what's that tell you about their research because they're real Scary enough, and creepy yeah, but, enough, and, and they're they real. Trump, they took Donald Trump off Facebook because he's mythical too. So, <laughs> <laughs> promise we wouldn't do any politics. He's I'm real sorry, too. Sorry. There are he's more real. things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy. He's real. Watch out. <laughs> we just lost half our listeners right That's there. That's right. Never well, do that. Question Let me try six. to bring back that other half. They're real. He's real. <laughs> question six since we are the approach shot. I ask this of everybody who comes on in your approach to life, which I'm starting to question in your approach to life. What one, After rule, that last comment, I gotcha. <laughs> what? What one rule do you live by? What one rule do I live by? This, this is a good place for a close up. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me get ready for my close up, please. Um, love is the only thing that is real. That's the most important thing. Everything else is fabricated by man. Did you have that answer, Pat? Because if you just came up with that, that was brilliant. Thank you. But I thought I you remember, just that, Neil. Was remember real. that, Neil. Remember that, Neil. Didn't you just think I, Bigfoot I, was I, real? Bigfoot is real too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and and Bigfoot's and, all about relationships too, by the way. And England Dan and John Ford Coley said love is the answer. So there you go. 
It they is. never it's quite a... said what the question was, though. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, and and that? that will be the one time we mention England and on John Ford Coley on this show. Well, I always Ford. found out that love was not the, the answer. Love was no. the question. No was the answer. <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> that was your high school year. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Connie, how about some shameless self-promotion? Where can people find you? You've already mentioned it a couple of times, but let's let's. Is make it okay, it Neil? Can I? Yes. Can I? Oh, yes. <laughs> John, is it okay? It's fine. <laughs> okay. All right. ConnieWillis.com. Four shows. One of them is Blue Rock Talk. It was is the real deal. Community, Bigfoot, aliens, UFOs, everything you've ever wanted to ask and know, you'll be a part of. And it's a safe place for you to do it. Any haters, we kick out. I don't care what they want to tip me. They're out. We don't deal with that stuff. Connie, after dark, have a drink with me. We all chat and talk. Or I have a guest in. Or we do trivia or whatever. We have a good time. Eat This is coming. Foodies with Attitude. Not sure exactly everything I'm going to do yet. But CIA graduate. Just going to have fun. You can cook with me. Or I'll do tidbits. I don't know. But it'll be fun. And I'm looking forward to that. And apparently Neil's going to join that one. Um, so that'll be really fun. <laughs> and then uh, I'm going to do win any lottery. It's it's actually uh, picking winning numbers with a pendulum. And let me tell you, at one point I got four. And, and when you see the procedure of doing it, I got four in a row. When you see that procedure of doing it, you're going to go, I think, I think this can work. And, and I do too. Uh, you, you do have to practice it. And, and that's what we'll do together is, is we'll do it together. And, and if and indeed it works that. really well, ConnieWillis.com will just be shut down and she'll be off somewhere. Absolutely. <laughs> or I'll have a whole crew around me just, you know, <laughs> working it going, all right. You, you, strike us off the, now. you strike us as the kind of person that if you won the lottery and won millions, you would still do the same thing the next day. You'd Absolutely. Really I would be playing golf. I might even, maybe I'd even buy the course, maybe just so John <laughs> could go on it all the time. John, do whatever you want. I don't care. You, know, you still owe her a drink no matter what. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it. John's been there for me. He's got, he's t taken care of me along the way. And by the way, I think John, now uh, remind me again. So when I was doing easy one Oh seven middays, it was, 88 89 i think mm -hmm. and then after i left didn't you take over it yeah I, well 10 years later 98 okay they, they had changed it to light 106 but isn't that cool you guys he was doing the he did the <laughs> same cool. shift i thought yeah. that's really wild you know that's really cool how, how often do you do you know meet that person yeah. that was diane williams same shift yeah the woman whose voice opens our show oh. was the one who did middays between the two. Okay. Of okay. Cause I knew, yeah, I'd left to go uh, to actually San Antonio. Then I went down to Sarasota. That's where I did, you know, really got to play a lot of really great golf mm -hmm. and boat and yachts and all that. And I'm like, what a world we live in. This is great. There's <laughs> yachts everywhere. And I get to go on it. Cause I'm in radio. That's right. If I wasn't in the radio, they wouldn't have cared. Who are you woman? Get away from the yachts. Get away. I don't know. You gotta look good enough in a bikini to get on. A few oh boats, man. You know? I didn't even know enough to have done that back then. <laughs> Stupid me. You know, now, now if you play your cards right, you'll end up on a spaceship. That, hey, <laughs> I'm telling you, I've got connections like you wouldn't know on that kind of stuff. So if you know uh, Mr. If, uh, e Elon, let me know. <laughs> and if you are up there and you're still broadcasting, your equipment is better than John's. <laughs> <laughs> it is so fun. Look at us. We both got this black, you know, phallic thing in our face. <laughs> it looks better close to you, John. <laughs> <laughs> One of us enjoying it more than the other. <laughs> and it's John. <laughs> that is hey, so Connie. funny. That is so funny. That come is... back to town. I'll buy you a drink and we'll play some golf. Why don't? Uh, why do I have to come back to town to do that? Why don't you set it up elsewhere? Because I we'll can't buy you a drink elsewhere. Yeah. Okay. Because he's only got trade in Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? Oh, that's what I'm finding out. <laughs> and India. <laughs> and India. Uh, and India. Yeah, I'll meet you halfway. Let's go in, to French in, Lick. India? <laughs> What? I don't think we mentioned French like enough in this show no. for, for the amount of trade that you, the amount of rounds you play with. <laughs> French, like, French, like, French, like. Is that where I would meet you? Yeah, that sounds like a deal. <laughs> what was the place that had the 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 haystack rolls? The f a farm. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what it looked like. Does that ring a bell? Like there no. were there would be haystack. Oh, oh yeah, we uh, we that was beautiful that was course. Yeah. Um, 
I remember the haystacks. I hear radios I clicking off all oh, over crickets, the country. Crickets. John tries to figure another <laughs> thing out. This place Sorry, isn't, John. Sorry. This isn't going to make it. We <laughs> cut it off long before this. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you guys, very much. It was fun. I appreciate it. it. Please Thank don't you, call John. me again. I don't. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm ruined forever. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to have us on your shows now, and then we'll ruin your career. I want to do a, go I'll do a live, I'll do, I'm going to do a live streaming golf show with you guys. So it doesn't okay. matter where you're at, since we're all different places on, uh, uh, yeah. around the country here. That's cool. That cool. All right, Connie, thank you so much. You're welcome. God, what a thank pleasure you. to have you. Oh, thanks, Neil. Do you mean that? Are you serious? <laughs> you know, I say it to everybody, but with you, I really, really Me? meant it. I mean, I really meant it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this show's going to be a hit together. This is going to. <laughs> there's going there's going to be three hosts from now on. <laughs> At least Neil thinks so. Doesn't he? <laughs> right. Suddenly I'm going to be in the box at the bottom and the two of you are going to be at the top. <laughs> Uh, Neil's underneath us. Yes, <laughs> the man underneath. <laughs> That's a good title, the man underneath. The man underneath. It could go all different ways. <laughs> it, it could. But I thanks. have a grandson I got to take home, so I got to run, y'all. Okay, wait a minute. Are we on? No. We, well, I mean, it's 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 not going to go anywhere. Okay, so. so we're not on. Okay, yeah. okay. Oh, so anyway, y'all, that was great. That was fun. Thanks, Neil. It was nice to meet. I have three words. Stream of consciousness <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, I i'm not sure we got back to the right place many times but it sure was fun talking to her it was fun it was it was great just to throw the map away and just be all over the place <laughs> you know, the funny part about this is right before we went on the air i read you a, a text that my brother-in-law sent that said he listened to the show with keith Hirschen, Hirschland. Mm -hmm. And said how great it was that we were so succinct and that and our answers were, you know, really short, staccato, and to the point. Yeah. Okay. So we threw that out the window. Apparently, we didn't do well with that. Well, let's do it the other way now. <laughs> exactly. Let's try the other. Next week, upside down and in different languages. <laughs> Oh man. I mean, but she is a piece of work, man. And she's, you know, she's she's cute and she's bubbly and um smart and and she believes in all kinds of weird stuff man well and so do her listeners i mean again you're not on 600 plus radio stations without having a following and the fact that not only is she doing that but that she's doing her own shows and getting people to pay for subscriptions mm -hmm. there is a hell of a following there and a passionate one so connie yeah. good on you yeah definitely so um this is it's nice to uh to reconnect, even though she has, uh, she has moved out of the area. We are no longer close enough to play golf together, but, uh, but okay. you are going to get her to French lick, French lick, French lick sometime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd mention it a couple more times for you. Well, thank um, you. That's where I am this weekend, by the way. French lick. Yes. Yeah, senior LPGA championship. is. Probably. Oh, well, there you go. It's not, you're not just bumming. Oh okay. no, 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 no. I always try to make it look like I'm working when I go there. <laughs> the key there would be try yeah. to. And it's like, we, we want to do, uh, we're actually, we're doing two one hour shows for our other show, those weekend golf guys. Yeah. That's and, awesome. Uh, and then getting, uh, you know, free room and, and food and golf because of it. So, you know, two hours worth of work for, for about a thousand dollars worth of, uh, accommodation. Sounds like I mean, John <laughs> Ashton's got it worked out. <laughs> it beats working for a living neil <laughs> that's true that's true you still having just fun i can't believe by the way in the open i i mentioned uh, our portuguese listeners and i said obrigado which means um thank you for listening or thank you and mm -hmm. i can't believe you and old dj let obrigado go without domo origato <laughs> some, some <laughs> mention of mr Roboto. <laughs> <laughs> there you go because old djs never let a good quote pass by no, see, and we could relate to last week what Keith was saying while he wanted to write the character that that talked in in lyrics. Yes, old rock songs. We've done yeah. that, man. and is going to. Yeah, yeah. We, we should we actually have... give him a call and see if we can be consultants so that we can do something, <laughs> some actual work for a living. <laughs> uh, hey, and next week for yeah. golfers everywhere, we have got 
and, and for international audience only. See, we're going international next week. Um, uh, his name is um, Pena. What's his first name? Augustine. Augustine ah. Pena. Ah. He is the number one golf architect in Latin America. That's fantastic. And he's got uh, some very unique ideas about the game of golf and is designing golf courses around it. Is that right? Yes. Something something we are not currently experiencing, huh? Yes. Wow. Yes. In in the broadcast business, folks, that's called a tease. That means John knows something and he's not sharing it. Nanny, nanny, boo. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, elevating our level of intelligence. <laughs> That's what, you know, that's people now understand T's. Okay. So. Yes, indeed. That's T E A S E, not T E E S. The other, why did they? Uh, we'll get into that another time. It's why English. did they create the same word with different spelling <laughs> just to confuse people? That's, that's okay, Mr. K N E E L Michaels. <laughs> Closed caption provided by. <laughs> Oh, man. Listen, um, you know, come back next week. Think about golf in the interim. But when you think about golf, when you play mm -hmm. golf, you have to keep in mind to keep your sanity that the same people invented golf and called it a game that invented bagpipes and called it music. So true. And remember, too, those of us who suffer from uh, lots of different ailments and stuff during the week, just remember, life is a gift. Go open it.